Hi everyone, it's Rebecca Imholz with the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce again. Welcome to Monday with the Mayor, this uh, rainy Monday, so I hope everyone for the most part has been able to stay inside and dry, and I hope that pertains to you. Shane Griffin, our President of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, who's our moderator today. How are you, Shane? I'm good, Rebecca. Thank you. I hope you are too. Um, doing my best to stay dry. I was out and about today, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a nasty day out there. Traffic is um, not as bad as it could be, but uh, it's still a still a challenge out there. So, but Rebecca, thanks for all that you do to help us uh, facilitate uh, these events, whether it's Monday with the Mayor or the Pivot with John Carroll or any of the other thousand and five hats that you wear when it comes to the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate you very much and. And thanks for helping us put this together uh, today. So, Thank you for that. And tomorrow we have a before nine networking event. So 830 in the morning. All right. Thanks, Shane. I had to get that plug in since you brought it up. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, please, uh, please join us for the before nine. And also keep in mind that we're still going forward with the expo. We are rolling right along. We've got, uh, well, after today, two days left. So uh, it's been a great success. We've had hundreds of people register and attend. So if you have not had a chance to check out the Mount Pleasant uh, Business and Community Expo presented by Cruise Subaru, you can still do that by visiting mountpleasantexpo.com. Uh, Just follow the simple instructions and you'll be able to uh, attend the virtual expo and uh, still some prizes available to win. So you've got a couple of more days. You can visit Mount Pleasant Expo to check it out. So a lot of great stuff happening right now. With that Absolutely. Said, we'll bring on uh, the mayor, the Honorable Will Haney, and also Lauren Sims from the town. Good afternoon, you two. Good to see you. Hey, Shane. Good afternoon. Now, Lauren, you're back in the office and the staff is back. Is that right? We are back. The family's back. Um, I'm very excited. Um, we all, we're all back here today, um, except for those with uh, special circumstances. That's, uh, those, but, uh, it's exciting yeah. to see everyone, yeah. Yeah, I'm still uh, working from home. We're, we're actually in the midst of a renovation now. So uh, we have not been back at our offices at iHeartMedia since all this went down in mid-March. Uh, yeah. So I haven't, I haven't, uh, we haven't been in our office in about six months. So it is good. To, it brings back a little bit of normalcy when you're back in your office and back with the people that you spend the majority uh, of your time with. So it's great to see uh, you both. And Mr. Mayor, Lauren, thank you both for your time. We really appreciate uh, that you do this each and every Monday to give our, our members an opportunity to find out uh, what's happening in regards to the town, not only COVID related, but uh, what's happening at town council and, and all kinds of other things that's, uh, that's going on with the town of Mount Pleasant. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to start today with uh, the, the latest numbers, the latest COVID numbers. We've heard uh, in the news, uh, some states are seeing a rise and a spike in some of the cases, but I think we have some good news here in our local area. Is that right? Yeah, we do. Um, I forgot I left them on my phone, which was charging on the floor. Um, over the last 14 days, the um, increase for 29464 was 65 cases, and the increase for 29466 zip code was 42 cases. So that is a downward trend. Um, we're real pleased with that. Um, the, the people who count these kind of things and look around the state say that um, this is due to areas having mask ordinances in effect and um, or, or just people wearing their mask, however you want to view it, um, it is effective. And I think I, I've noticed as I've been out and I have ventured out more, I've gone to more restaurants because I know that now the norm is social distancing. And I know now that when I'm seated somewhere, even though the, the seating distance is there, that nobody's gonna be walking by me without a mask on. And um, I see it shopping and, and that type thing. So um, these numbers are down and hallelujah, that's what we want. And um, just to dispel any myths, I absolutely hate wearing a mask. I hate wearing a mask, but I love what it's doing for our community. And I love the fact that everybody else is doing it. And those of you watching, I wanna thank you for that. Our numbers continue down. And Shane, you, we mentioned um, you're the stadium voice of my Citadel Bulldog football team. And although I did not go to the game this weekend, it does feel so normal to see high school and college football again. And this is what we're working towards. We're working towards returning to normal safely and step by step. And, um, and these numbers show that we'll get there. So 65 cases over the last 14 days in 464. 
and um, 42 and 466. You know, at one time those numbers were two to one, 464 over 466, but now they're they're coming uh, closer together again. And um, so as long as they're down, that's good. Yeah, it was an interesting Saturday at Johnson Hanga, to say the least. Uh, there were only about 3,200 fans uh, in the stands. Of course, that stadium seats 10, 11, 12, something like that. Uh, everybody had their masks on. Um, if you left the stadium, you were not able to come back into the stadium. So you, once you were there, you had to stay. Uh, so it was a different atmosphere. There were no cannons. Uh, there were no uh, core cadets on the field. Everybody was told to stay off the field. It was definitely different, but much like I said to Lauren about having the staff come back to town, uh, to, to town hall, there is a little bit of normalcy that's starting to return. And to be up in the booth and kind of be back doing what I normally do was at least a, a good feeling. And I didn't have to wear a mask, which was a, a good thing, because I was outside kind of off by myself and social distancing from everybody. Plus, it's a little bit hard to say, let's go Bulldogs, or here come your Citadel Bulldogs when you got a mask. Uh, when you're out. Well, they cut me some slack on that one, and uh, it was still a good day and a, a great opportunity to get out and enjoy, uh, enjoy some college football. But, Mr. Mayor, thank you for uh, relaying those numbers. That is great news. I actually was at a restaurant today for lunch, and they were doing everything right. Uh, all the waitresses and the waiters and the bartenders had on masks, and uh, folks, as they got up and as you went to the restroom or you left or came in, you had to have your mask on. So to your point, as we continue to, to get through this and move through this the best that we can, as long as we make the right decisions and do the right things, uh, this will start to, to go our way eventually, but it will take, uh, it will take time. Yeah, and um, another thing, you might have noticed the um, series of articles that's coming out in the Post and Courier now. They, uh, they use FOIA and got all the emails and everything that everybody in a decision-making, government decision-making capacity had, the governors, all the mayors, and, and everybody else's. And, um, and I, um, I, I think I told you, I kept a journal. I, I've got it sitting over here. It's hundreds and hundreds of pages of every phone call and every bit of information, every time a hospital exec would call me or something, because there was no way with all that going on that I could remember these kind of numbers and this kind of stuff. And then you had the legal side of all the calls with Columbia and with the county and all the mayors around, what what can we do? What's legal? What's not legal? You know, all, what what are you going to do? What's your municipality going to do? So I kept a journal of all that, and it was all scanned as a result of that for you because I kept it for one reason. Um, one, um, for two reasons. One was to help me keep stuff straight, and two, if there was ever any question that the public had on how did you make decisions and what kind of information were you getting, it's all right there. I'll be glad to share it with anybody. Um, but the Post and Courier got that and they ran the story this weekend and all of this is to bring this to a point in that what we know now, we know so much more about this virus, how it gets transmitted and how we can stop it. And we've zeroed in, if we'll keep the social distancing, keep wearing that mask and keep washing those hands, I mean we know very, very few people uh, now, I, I know in my circles, uh, very few people that I hear, oh, all of a sudden, you know, somebody that I know caught it. I, I do want to say two things before we get too complacent. Um, two highly, um, well, one highly publicized case. My pastor, Steve Wood, at, at St. Andrews in Mount Pleasant, he was like the first diagnosed case. He was in ICU. He has recovered. He's preaching again and all that. But he let me know the other day he is still in physical and occupational therapy. And he got out of the hospital in April or early May. And then the chairman of Waterworks, we had a Waterworks Commission meeting um, Monday night. Rick Crosby, that came out, that was public, that, that he had it. And although he has recovered and he was not hospitalized, it did cause a blood clot in his eye for which he's going to have to have eye surgery. So this is no cold. This is no flu. This, this thing has other effects that we just don't want. We're winning, we're reducing it, so let's don't quit now. Absolutely, and I've read report after report about the after effects of, of the coronavirus, whether it's uh, lung problems, heart problems, to your point, Mr. Mayor, there are, we really don't know what happens, you know, months, years, decades after someone is afflicted with this. So again, best thing to do right now is to do your best to not get it. Social distance, wash your hands, put your masks on, and 
wait for that vaccine and, and hopefully, uh, you know, when that comes, we'll be able to get past this, put it behind us, get back to our sports, uh, get, get back to uh, being close to our families and people that we love. It's, you know, this is a season of life. I, I try to think of it that way. And we're just marching through this season and uh, this too shall pass. And, and uh, I think we'll be better and stronger. I know we'll be cleaner for it because we're all washing our hands. Yeah. So there's, uh, there are some positives that will come out of this. It may not look like it right now, but uh, there will be some positives that, uh, that come out of, of all this. I wanted to jump to uh, your association with the one region. I understand there's uh, some really big news, some really great news with a grant, uh, the, the regional economic grant. Is that right? Got it right here. Funny you should ask. Thank you very much. It's almost like we scripted this. It's almost <laughs> like we rehearsed this. Yeah, um, there is a $400,000 grant to the region that's coming through the Council of Governments, and we had a council, I sit on that too. Uh, we had a, a COG board meeting this morning, and this is people all over the region, as everybody knows, Berkeley, Charleston, and Dor Dorchester. And uh, it's $400,000 that will come over two years, and then the one region group that I also sit on added another hundred. So it's about a half million dollars. And they are going to um, hire an expert, an economic expert to come in. And we, this is the same group through CRDA. This is the same mentality and the same leadership that produced 50,000 jobs for our region over a decade. And this was, of course, after losing the the naval base back in the 90s i lived here then and you can remember we thought that was the end of our local economy and look at us now with with all the industries from boeing down to some some boutique high-tech industries but what this is going to do is help us figure out okay we know things changed where did they change and how did they change and and i know you could say well why don't you just spend that half a million dollars with us those of you watching and, and we'll rejuvenate the economy and that you could make a strong case about that but what this is going to do is say, what did we learn from this? I know, and, and Shane, we had this talk several, I mean, months ago, that one of the problems was people's supply chain was interrupted. Even if you could still do business, you know, during quarantine and, and through, you know, social distance and all that, there were some businesses, I know some friends personally said, whoa, my supply chain got interrupted. There's one thing. Um, other things about, you know, we were reboot, rebooting the commute. Um, in areas where there was high traffic, think 526, you know, coming back to Mount Pleasant in the afternoon and going over in the morning. Um, anything like that that we can learn that will strengthen our economy and, and keep things going, whether you're still in recovery or not, um, and I would love to hear, you know, from our members, um, that we, we got information at our town council meeting on Friday that there's only a 2% difference in a portion of our um do you remember, um, Lauren, I forget which segment it is. It's not, it's not all sales tax, but it's the one that applies to a, to a certain income that the town gets. It's only 2% less than it was before COVID. So there has been some massive recovery going on. Does that mean every business is back where it was? No. I know restaurants probably aren't with the 50% seating and all of that. But this is a great thing. It will help us go forward. We have a proven track record through the Regional Development Alliance. Of, of having a good economy and creating jobs and we're looking for resiliency and we're looking for what we can learn there to to apply going forward so this is great news well, it's the awesome. local option sales tax mayor thank you very much yes sir <laughs> option sales tax is only two percent lower that's that one percent that we add on here it's only one percent two percent lower than it was before covid right lauren i need my tea I'm on an antihistamine. I'm sorry. I'm having these fall allergies, and my throat was all stopped up. So, well, that's good news that comes in uh, to Business Appreciation Month here in September. Uh, I was honored to um, accept the mayor's proclamation at town council meeting earlier this month, and uh, we appreciate obviously our our business here uh, in Mount Pleasant, and we've done we as the chamber have done everything possible to show that appreciation especially with our Mount Pleasant Business and Community Expo presented by Cruise Subaru that we've already talked about. Again, just visit mountpleasantexpo.com and you'll see all of the information there on how to download the app, how to log in, and then you're able to actually visit the, uh, the virtual uh, booths there as part of that. But, uh, you know, Mr. Mayor, it's been, it, it's really good to hear that 
for the most part, it seems that business is starting to get going again. Of course, there is restrictions. There are restrictions depending on what industry that you're in. But I know from my standpoint, being out and talking to a lot of business owners and business professionals, it seems that things are starting to, to pick back up. The statistics do show that. Of course, there are businesses that are suffering and hurting, but from a, 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 an overall standpoint, it just seems like things are starting to kind of get back in the right direction. People are ready to spend money. People are ready to be active and get out and do things, which is a great thing when it comes to the town, correct? Yes, absolutely. And I think like what we're talking about with with school being back, you know, last Monday, um, I know in my wife's class, they brought back the seven student component that was wait listed to be uh, in classroom with activities. We see sports activities and all. We're, we're getting a sense of normalcy again, and that's really good to see. And just being out and about this weekend, um, I feel it as well, but I do see it uh, with proper precautions being taken. It's little things I look for, like I was in several stores this weekend and just as people move through the checkout line, um, I notice people looking down, where's a dot? And everybody stays on their dot and we keep our six feet. That's a, that's a really good thing because as the numbers show, we're winning against the virus, we're doing better, and we're getting business back to normal. That's what we've been working for. It's been a long six months. Oh, absolutely. And I wanted to bring in Lauren now because uh, incredibly, we're um, we're going to be coming up on the, the, the holiday season. We're about to enter uh, Q4. It's hard to believe. It seems like the days go, they're very long days, but then time goes by very quickly. But uh, that's neither here nor there, but we are up against the holidays. And I know the town is looking at ways to support local businesses uh, in regards to holiday shopping and ensuring that uh, the businesses are doing things right during the holiday season. Lauren, you want to talk about that some? Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, we are, we're, we're definitely heading into the holiday season already. I know in the Sims household, it starts in October because everyone was born in October in our world. So um, it's really for us, but um, one of the things that we're trying to push here at the town is to shop local this holiday season um, and just you know, make sure that you're showing our local economy, our local businesses who have really borne the brunt of this virus. Um, the ones who have come up with creative um, ways to stay open. Uh, they don't have hundreds of sprinter vans that they can run around and drop packages off at all hours of the day and night. Um, and so uh, we're just encouraging folks to continue to shop local this holiday season. Uh, but I think, um, you know, to, to your points that you were just making with folks slowly getting back out and about, change of season starting to occur. Um, I know this week and I have to take my child to buy her some closed toed shoes. Um, and, you know, went, went to the place off of Coleman here um, at that point in time of the year, right? So um, just as, as everyone is getting back into school and, and starting to move into the holiday spirit, I encourage you to consider and, and to think and to shop local um, as you're making purchases this year. It'll make a world of difference. Absolutely. And thank you for that, Laura. I know the town is, is working really hard in regards to uh, local business and, and making sure that uh, they have the information that they need during this uh, critical time and are making the right decisions to ensure that consumers come back. We've talked about this before that, uh, you know, if your business is doing things the right way in regards to protocol, your consumers are going to feel safe and they're going to come back and they're going to spend more money. And that's only a good thing uh, when it comes to the community. So, um, Lauren, thank you very much uh, for that. Mr. Mayor, I wanted to cover one more thing uh, before we, we let you guys go. I understand there was a change in the millage uh, rate and all kinds of other stuff that goes along with that. So if you could cover that real quick. I'll be glad to. Um, every five years, the county uh, reassesses all the real estate and you, you get an assessed value. And if you've ever looked it up online or if you've ever really looked at your um, tax notice, you, you realize there, there can be a big difference between your assessment rate and what you think your fair market rate is or what you know it is. And there's reasons for that that the town is not involved in. What we are involved in is that portion of your tax bill. You see the county and you see the public schools and then you see the town in Mount Pleasant. And so what the, what the county does is they let us know and they handle the assessment. We don't do this. They tell us on average, how much your property values, whether they be uh, residential or commercial, have changed uh, in the, since the last assessment five years ago. So this is a good sign that Mount Pleasant 
the average, and you know there'll be some that are more and maybe some that are less, was 13.1, I believe. Is that right, Lauren? I think 13.1. I know it was over 13%. Um, so that means that your home, and that's only assessed value. The market value may be even much more than that. So when you get your tax bill, that new assessed value is going to be on there there are other you know there are other things that affect that but in, I'm talking in general terms so you will see an increase in the value of your property that is usually a good sign that's a good thing you want your biggest investment to be going up in value so what we're required to do by law is is the town's millage rate which was we we were at uh, 41 mills um, we have to look at what revenue we were getting when our millage rate was 41 mils and we have to take that rate back we have to reduce the tax rate and so for us that number was from 41 I'm sorry um, to 34.7 for for operating I know this gets kind of wonky there are two parts of our millage there's operating and there's debt service and debt service is what we do to uh, bond things so that we can build buildings, we can fix drainage, do all those those type things, and that money goes into its own account. It is not spent on office furniture. It's not hiring employees or anything like that. So what we did was when we got these numbers, we did the operating back to where we will not make any more operating money based on the new assessment that we were making when our operating was at um, at 38 mils, it, we moved it back to 34.7. So we reduced the operating. All right. On the debt side, our millage, and I'm, I'm, I always have to look at this, it was 2.9 mils. And so one of the things we have to do is we have to fix drainage. And there's two reasons for that. Not just because we see it and people complain about it, it will affect our bond ratings in the future and it will affect the town's insurance rate your insurance rating if you do not have a town that has a plan and a funding mechanism for fixing drainage that's why we formed the flood resilience committee in january as a result of the recommendations of the dutch dialogues in charleston if you're a coastal municipality and you aren't watching flooding you don't have a committee to do it and you aren't funding the fix so that leads up to the only little increase we did was 1.7 mils that is restricted to that fund that is the debt service that we will use to fix flooding. And so um, your tax rate went down from 41 to 39.3. So yes, we lowered the tax rate. And I want to thank the Moultrie News because their headline since Friday said Mount Pleasant increases tax rate. I got in touch with them this morning. I said, no, the tax rate is lower than it was. Somebody coming in, buying a house or building a new business, their tax rate will be now lower than it would have been had they done it before this. The only increase you're going to experience is because your property has gone up in value. The average that you will see is about $30 on a $450,000 home in the town of Mount Pleasant. That's it. And if you want to criticize me, for quote raising taxes your tax bill will go up about thirty dollars on average but to fix that flooding and to know that we can bond that now while bond interest rates are at almost a historic low which gives us leverage and saves us millions of dollars over the life of those bonds if you want to argue that that's raising taxes and that wasn't the right thing to do I, i'll take that criticism all day um, we did not have from any council members any other mechanism for fixing that flooding, any other funding mechanism for that. And so when we had a chance to lower your tax rate but fix flooding and not add any fluff to our operating budget, I think that was a good act of council. I voted for it. And um, if there's any criticism for that, I'll take it. But that's the rationale behind it. We are still less than half the tax rate of Charleston, half the tax rate of North Charleston, we're lower than Goose Creek. I think we're lower than Somerville. Our taxes are very, very low, and we're proud of that. But we're going to get this flooding fixed. We're, we just spent $11.5 million to fix Snee Farm. Um, that was state revolving money. I know there's, some, there's a flooding issue up in Dunes West, which normally we don't have on newer, as we'll call them, developments, you know, within the past 30 years. 
um, we've got flooding to fix in Hobcaw and the first two that are already queued up and have plans and an engineering study done are in two basins of the old village. It's not the, the whole old vi village, but it's two basins over there. That flooding infrastructure has had no money spent on it in the last 60 years. So for, you know, 30 bucks a year by the town of Mount Pleasant, we can fix flooding and it will apply in a broad sense. And that's what we're doing. So if you see that we raise tax rates, that's not true. We lowered tax rates, but we didn't lower it all the way back to where you will see no change in your tax bill. I hope I explained that okay. It's kind of wonky. No, that's excellent. Thank you for walking us through that from beginning to end because uh, we want to make sure that we communicate the correct information, especially when we're, we have the mayor with us each Monday. So thank you, uh, sir, for breaking that uh, down for us and making it much, uh, much more understandable. That's all I've got today, sir. Anything else uh, from you, Mr. Mayor, that you wanted to cover? Um, I, I think we're, we were going to, um, we, we've got some things going on um, to um, memorialize uh, Wayne Magwood. There will be some ideas uh, coming out. Of course, most of those will center around Shim Creek. Um, some naming opportunities, some citizens' ideas for maybe some artwork or something like that. Um, also, Lauren and I confirmed um, there's been no decision about the Christmas parade yet. It would be wonderful if we could have one, but we've got to follow regional and state guidelines on that because we don't want to do something like that and have a super spreader event and set ourselves back. Lesson learned from history. Charleston did that in uh, the 1918 flu uh, pandemic had a big celebration on Marion Square. It turned into a super spreader event, and by January, they were back in quarantine again. Lessons learned from history. Yeah, we certainly don't want to go backwards. Uh, that is for sure. We've made that we've 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 uh, made up so much ground here that we don't want to certainly uh, go backwards in our attempt. So, uh, Lauren, Mr. Mayor, always great to see you. Thank you very much for the time. We'll see you back here next Monday for Monday with the Mayor. Remember to be safe, stay healthy, and keep moving forward, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Shane. Bye. Thank you.